everybody. This is Diana from So Very Crafty, and we are here today to make this fantastic double zipper crossbody bag that also has a nice inside uh, pouch with a lining, no raw edges, and two large zipper pockets to put anything that you like inside. This is a super simple bag making project that anybody with S strong beginner sewing skills can make in no time. I hope that you like this project. Subscribe to my channel if you want more of these sewing and crafting projects from So Very Crafty. Um, I know that you will love this project. It is simple and easy, so let's get started. Okay, so what do we need for this project? Well, we are going to need some fabric, some zippers, and some hardware. What I've done is I have two 22 inch zippers. You really only need some 12 inch zippers, but I like to use the extra long zippers uh, because it just makes my life a lot easier. And as we go along, you'll see why. Now, I have add, added some hardware to my bag uh, this time around. I have added two one inch swivel clips. And that's just these clips that add on to your bag. And the center of the rounded part where your strap is going to go measures one inch. Then I've added some D rings. This time I've actually used some triangle rings just for fun. But you can use standard D rings and they're one inch as well. And lastly, I have used some uh, magnetic snaps and they just come apart and they're magnetic just like that to close the top of our bag. And as I've stated, we have our 22 inch zippers. The next thing that we have is we have our fabric pieces. I have one of our outer pieces that is four inches wide by the width of our fabric. However wide your fabric is, is how wide or how long this piece is. And that's going to be our crossbody strap. Then I have a six inch by four inch piece of fabric that are going to be used for our tabs. And I have two of these. Next, I have two pieces of 10 and a half inch wide by 19 inch long outer fabric pieces and four 10 and a half inch wide by 19 inch long lining pieces. And you're probably wondering why there's four. Well, the reason that there's four is because two of them are going to be our pocket pieces for our double zipper pouch because these two zippers need to have pockets, we are going to use two of our lining pieces to equate to our pocket pieces. So let's get started on making this bag. It is not as complicated as it seems. We are going to go step by step and I'm going to show you how to make this bag. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to set aside our lining pieces for now. I have gone ahead and I have taken our outer piece, one of them, and I have cut it into three separate pieces. I measured from the top two inches and I made a cut so this top piece measures two inches by ten and a half inches. The next piece I measured five inches down so this measures five inches by ten and a half and then we have the uh, remainder which is whatever the remainder is by ten and a half. Now, this seems like it's going to be a really long bag, but in reality, we are going to cut off a bunch of this bag um, to our measurements that we actually want by the end of all of this. 
Now, when we add our zippers, which is going to be the first thing that we do, we are going to start from the bottom piece. So let's take these top two pieces and set them aside and start with the bottom piece. We are going to place our bottom piece face up on our work surface. We're gonna take one of our zippers, and again, you can use a 12 inch zipper, but I, I would really suggest that you use a zipper that's longer than the width of your fabric because otherwise you end up with a little gap in between the zipper uh, and the end and it doesn't look as good. So we are going to use a longer zipper. We are going to place this zipper face down at the top of our outer fabric bottom. The next thing we are going to do is we are going to take one of our lining pieces and we are going to place it right sides down so that it is even with our zipper and our outer piece. And we're just going to place a few pins. making sure that all the raw edges are lined up and we have a zipper sandwich here. We're going to head over to the sewing machine and we are going to stitch this zipper right along the top here and uh, move on to our next step. I'll be right back. Okay, so we have placed our zipper sandwich into our sewing machine and we are just going to stitch this zipper all the way straight down. One straight stitch, very simple to do. I have though moved my, or I am going to move my needle over a little bit to the left so that we are close to the zipper teeth. And our zipper foot will ride right along our zipper teeth you can feel them underneath you can't see it in the video but you can feel it underneath it's going to ride right along there and our needle has been pushed over to the left a bit and it is going to be a little bit closer to the zipper teeth for a nice finished look so we are going to stitch this zipper right along here and uh, move on to our next step Okay, now you can see that our zipper is sewn in and we are going to flip this so that it is right sides out, just like that. And we're going to head over to our workstation and start on our next step. Okay, we are back and as you can see we have our half of our zipper on our workstation we have a extra long piece of lining fabric and our outer fabric and now we need to add our next piece of outer fabric which is our five inch piece now keep in mind that I have uh, what's called a directional fabric 
which means that the uh, it matters what direction I place my fabric in the next step. So I am actually going to place this fabric upside down. Otherwise, when I turn the, the zipper right sides up from sewing it the next time around, my letters will be right sides up. Um, if I do it the other way, they will be upside down. So keep in mind, if you're using a directional fabric, to pin it and do a dry fit and make sure that your fabrics are going in the right direction. If you're not using a directional fabric, it doesn't really matter, but for this it will matter. So we're going to place this right sides uh, up and upside down on our work surface. We are then going to place our zipper again wrong sides down matching the side edges and the top edges all the raw edges need to match and the next thing we're going to do is we are going to fold up our lining piece rather than add another lining piece we're just simply going to fold up this lining piece and pin the layers together again like a zipper sandwich that we had before and pin the layers together make sure all these layers are together now you can use as many pins as you want uh, this is enough for me but if you're just a beginner or a confident beginner you may want to use more uh, pins but this is enough for me. So we are going to head over to the sewing machine and we are going to sew the next part of our zipper into place. I'll be right back. Okay, so we are back at the sewing machine and we are sewing the second part of our zipper. And we're sewing it in exactly the same way that we sewed the first part of our zipper. Now, as you can see, our letters are all right sides up, but this time we are going to top stitch along our uh, zipper so that when we open and close our zipper, it doesn't catch on the lining. And it also adds a more professional look. So our zipper is opening and closing the way it should, but let's top stitch these uh, zippers and we will move on to our next step. Now you are going to want to unzip your zipper to top stitch, otherwise it's going to be very difficult. There you go, nice and neat. And let's repeat for the other side. Okay, now we have our first zipper installed. And as you can see, it opens up nicely. We have a pocket piece inside. 
We can zip it up. This is what the pocket looks like on the other side. Just perfect. Now we're going to add our second zipper exactly the same way that we added the first zipper. We have our five inch piece that is faced up, face up. We are going to place our zipper face down. We're going to take another lining piece and we are going to place that right sides down. Again, lining up all of our raw edges on the sides and the top and we're going to pin. We have our zipper sandwich. I'm not going to show you this because it's exactly the same process as we did uh, before. I'm going to head over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew this and I'll be right back. Okay, now we have our double zippers our two pockets and we are ready to go to move on to making this into a real bag. So the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to take our other long piece of outer fabric and we are going to place it right sides together with our zipper pieces. and we are going to pin the top to make sure that the top is even. Now the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to open up these zippers so that our zipper pull is in the middle because we are going to trim the sides and the bottom of this bag so that it is the dimensions that we want. because right now this is too long to be the bag that we want it to be. We need to um, measure our bag and cut off the bottom first of all. So what I did in the bag that's on the post is I measured 15 inches and I actually thought that was too long. So for this bag I am going to measure 13 inches. I think that's a better length for this bag and I'm just going to cut off the bottom. So we can measure uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Use our ruler. And just cut right across the bottom. And I apologize uh, for the ungainliness of this, but I'm trying to do this on camera and it's not as easy as you think. Now you will notice that we are cutting through this pocket piece. And that's fine because we are going to sew along the bottom of this. So before we actually cut off our zippers, we are going to head over to the sewing machine and using a half inch seam allowance. Normally I would use a quarter inch seam allowance, but for this bag I'm going to use a half inch seam allowance. I am going to stitch along the sides and along the bottom 
and that's it. And we're going to leave the top open. So we're going to stitch along the sides and along the bottom, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we are here. We are going to sew the sides and the bottom using a half inch seam allowance, and we're just going to sew over these zippers. pivot when we get to the bottom so we can have a nice neat corner. to our workstation and move on to our next step. Okay, so we have stitched the bottom and the sides and now it's time to clip off these seams uh, and the zippers. So I'm just going to go along here and trim these seams and cut off these zippers uh, to about a quarter inch. And as you can see, our rotary cutter just cuts right through all of that. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. About a quarter inch. No more excess zipper. We are going to use our rotary cutter and just clip off the corners, not going through the stitching for a nice clean corner. And we are going to turn this bag right sides out. Now, as you can see, this bag is starting to look like a double zipper crossbody bag. Our zippers are perfect, just the way we want them. And now we are going to add the rest of our uh, pieces, which are going to be the lining and the strap, and we will finish up this project. Now the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to add our magnetic snap to our lining pieces. And I am going to measure down one and a half inches in the center of this lining fabric and I am going to mark where I need to place my magnetic snaps. Now. I am going to grab a, a couple of pieces of interfacing that I am going to just place on the back side of this uh, lining fabric to give these snaps a little support because they are a bit heavy for this lightweight quilting cotton that I'm using for my interfacing. So let me do that right now and I will be back. Okay, so I am going to fold this in half lengthwise 
and just make a little crease so I know where the center is. I'm going to measure down one and a half inches using my ruler and I'm going to make a mark right there. Now you will notice in these uh, magnetic snaps they have a grommet which is a little round piece that has a hole and two slots. I'm going to place the hole on the dot that I made and then I'm going to mark with my heat erasable pen the slots because I'm going to cut those slots in order to be able to put the magnetic snap through there. And I'm going to repeat this process for the other piece of uh, lining fabric. So we're just going to Fold that in half, find our center mark, measure down one and a half inches, mark, use our grommet, and mark our slots. Now, Okay, now I'm going to take my just a little square piece of interfacing and hold it there. I'm going to take a small pair of scissors and clip these slit slits through the interfacing. You could fuse this interfacing if you wanted to. I didn't see the need. You're going to take one half of your your uh, magnetic snap and you'll see it's got these prongs and you're gonna place the prongs right through the slots that you just cut open with your scissors or seam ripper. Now once you've done that, you're going to take your grommet and you are going to place it over the prongs and simply press the prongs. You can place, press them inwards or outwards, it's really up to you, so that they lay flat. And your magnetic snap is installed. That's all there is to it. And you're going to repeat the same process for the other side of your magnetic snap. And your magnetic snap will be installed. And there you have it. You have your male side and your female side of your magnetic snap installed. So the next thing you're going to do is place these two pieces right sides together and you are going to stitch these two pieces along the side Now the next thing you're going to do is place these pieces right sides together. You're going to take your bag that you have now created and you are going to cut this um, lining piece across the bottom leaving a half inch seam allowance
just like that. Then you're going to head over to the sewing machine and you're going to stitch the sides and the bottom, but you're going to leave an opening in the bottom of about three to four inches so that you can turn this bag right sides out when you need to. So sew the sides and just a part of the bottom, leaving an opening in the bottom, just like that, and we'll be right back. Okay, we have finished our lining. Clip off these threads. I'm going to clip the corners and set this aside. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to make the tabs and the strap. And the tabs and the strap are made exactly the same way. We are going to fold the raw edges into the center just like that and press with a hot iron. Then we are going to fold them in half again so that they make a one inch wide strap as so. And we are going to top stitch on both sides of the strap. I'm not going to demonstrate this. I've demonstrated this in prior videos, but you will end up with a one inch wide strap with top stitching on both sides. So I'm going to head over to the sewing machine. I'm going to create this, both of the tabs and the strap in exactly the same way, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we have our one inch strap. And as you can see, we have our tabs that are one inch and top stitched just the way we want them. Now it's time to put this bag together. So we have our lining that is wrong sides out. We have our bag which is right sides out. We are going to place our bag inside our lining so that they are right sides together. We're going to match our side seams, match our top seams. Everything should be in line just the way we want it. Perfect. Now we are going to take our tabs and we have our triangle rings or D rings, whatever you want. We're just going to wrap these around there. And we are going to place these in between the lining and the outer bag so that they are facing down into the bag and we're going to have about an inch or so sticking up 
because we want to make sure that these tabs are in there securely and we'll end up cutting off this excess. But just make sure that these seams are lined up, everything's lined up, and we are going to pin these tabs just like that. And we're going to repeat that with the other side so that we have two tabs onto our triangle ring or D ring, whichever you decide that you want to use for your bag. The next thing we are going to do now is we are going to stitch using a half inch seam allowance all the way around the top and leaving the top open so we don't want to sew them together we just want to stitch all the way around the top using our half inch seam allowance and then we will come back and we will add our strap and we will be ready to go with this bag. So let's head over to the sewing machine and sew the top of this bag.